Hello, welcome back. Welcome to 6.2 Properties of Trapezoids and Kites. Today what we're going to do is go over how to identify parts of a trapezoid, understand the properties of said trapezoid, understand the properties of a isosceles trapezoid, identify and find the values of the trapezoid mid-segment, and understand the properties of a kite. All right, so by the end of today, you pretty much know everything about trapezoids and kites you need to know. So, let's start. You do now, 6.2 A. Good, good. All right, going over this, the trampoline showed is a regular dodecagon. So first thing you need to know is how many sides does a dodecagon have? The answer is 12 sides, so n equals 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12. Find the measure of each interior angle. You can use the formula. Number of sides minus 2 times 180 over the number of sides. So 12 minus 2 times 180 divided by 12 is 10 times 180 divided by 12. 1800 divided by 12, which gives you 150 degrees. Pretty simple. To find the exterior angles, we should know that the sum of exterior angles always adds up to 360. So you just do 360 by the, divided by the number of sides. So number of sides is 12. 360 divided by 12 is, I'm going to guess 30 is my answer. Look at that. Now, the reason I remember that is these two numbers should always add up to 180. They're always supplementary. So you got like a little angle here. So you got the exterior angle and the interior angle that are adjacent, meaning next to each other. They're a linear pair also. So that means they're supplementary and adjacent. Got it? Awesome. Now we're going to get into the lesson. So first thing, what is a trapezoid? Hmm, trapezoid. Anyone have a clue? Now, the basic real definition is it's a quadrilateral, meaning it has four sides. All right? Four-sided figure. Now, it needs one pair of parallel sides. So that means either the top and bottom are parallel, or the left and right, or the diagonals, but opposite sides parallel. Now, the um, way this works is you show sides are parallel with the little arrows, right? So these two would be the parallel. Got it? Um, now, what they did in the past, and this is what some new books say, which I disagree with, but if they want to change math, they change math. Now they're saying it's a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides. So what they're saying is if you have two parallel sides, you can still be a trapezoid. So they're saying something like a square or a rectangle could be a trapezoid or a parallelogram. I was like, what? They're a rhombus. They can all be trapezoids. I'm not going to go with that definition, but that's what they technically say, so that's the definition. So, basis of a trapezoid. I'm more of a purist. Uh, the basis of a trapezoid. So this is your trapezoid. Now we're going to define the parts of the trapezoid. The basis. What do you think the bases are? When I point, you'll have an answer. Did you say the parallel sides? If you did, you are correct. If you did it, you should have. All right. The base angle. So the bases are, here's your trapezoid, right? The two parallel sides. Base angles of a trapezoid. What do you think they are? There's four of them, okay? So here's your bases, one, two. Your base angles are the pair of angles connected to the same base. So you have two pairs of base angles connected to the base. So you have two angles connected to this base, and you have two angles connected to that base. So you have two sets, all right? In an, in an isosceles trapezoid, these things happen to be equal. If it wasn't an isosceles trapezoid, they don't have to be equal, okay? Oh, I just give the definition over there. Legs of a trapezoid. Those are the non-parallel sides. So if you have any sides that are not parallel, those are your legs. But if you have two pairs of parallel sides, I guess everything's the base. You have no legs. That's why it's weird. And there you go. There's your legs. Got it? All right. A size of this trapezoid, which is what we have right here, is just a trapezoid with, you need two things. Can you guess? Guess them right now. All right. Did you say congruent legs? That means these two legs are congruent, not the bases, but the legs. And then congruent angles. The base angles are also congruent. Okay, so the base angles are congruent and the legs are congruent. Mid segment, we'll be getting to this later on. Mid, what does the word mid mean to you? If you said middle, good, segment, right? It's a line with no arrows, it's starting and end point with a line, right? Segment of a line, part of a line. So it's pretty much the line that runs through the middle of the trapezoid. Now, in order for it to run, or sorry, the segment, to run through the middle of the trapezoid, you need three things, two things to be true. Ah, three. 
it's parallel to both bases, right? So it runs in the same direction and it bisects both blades. So what that means is these two pieces are congruent from here to here, and from here to here, and these two pieces are congruent. So it cuts both legs in half. That's how come it is the halfway point of the legs and it being parallel, make sure that happens, right? Sorry, my eyes are very dry today. Okay, a quadrilateral, so it cuts a four-sided figure, and two sides of adjacent angles are congruent. So, are adjacent, two sets of adjacent congruent sides. So you've got this side, adjacent meaning next to, and you got the other side. Now, um, a kite also has opposite angles congruent, which we'll get into later on. Now, a kite is also known, a lot of people say it's a diamond. All right, that's okay. There's a diamond technically, but we use the term kite. Um, theorem 6.4. If a trapezoid is isosceles, so this is isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is, we just say, congruent, right? So you got the angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle what is congruent to angle C? B, all right? The converse, to run it back there, um, if a trapezoid has a pair of congruent blank, then it's isosceles trapezoid. Did you say, oh, sorry. And then A plus B here, because they're next to each other, they are supplementary, so they add up to 180, all right? Because the whole thing is 360, so two of these and two of these is 360. 360 divided by two is 180. So therefore, just the two on the same side are uh, supplementary. Angles. So, the trapezoid is a pair of congruent base angles, two, 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 right? So a pair of angles that are congruent, that's two. Then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So if A is B and B and C are both congruent, it's an isosceles trapezoid. So this way you get the triangles equal. This one you have the triangles showing you that it's a triangle. So anyway, try problem six, seven, and eight. All right, I'm going to run you through six just in case you didn't know. These are all isosceles trapezoids, by the way. Okay. Now for problem number six. First thing we find is A, B, C, D, X. Who do you want to find first? C, 70. Other base angles also, 70. They're congruent. How do we find A and B? We know that, I'm oh, sorry, these are congruent, not supplementary. We know that these two are supplementary, so they add up to 180. Um, I went out of order. Since this is 19, the other leg is also 19. I guess I want to do the math last. A and B do 180 minus 70, and that gives you 110. So that means that B is 110. And A is one thing. Got it? Why do you try problem seven? So congruent, as you're doing that problem, congruent legs are both 19. 70, 70. 180 minus 70 is 110, 110. All right, this one, X is congruent because it's a base angle, so it's 112. In order to find Z and Y, you supplementary subtract 180 minus that answer. You get 68 and 68. All right, we're going to problem eight. Oh, oh, throwing some letters here. Not that hard, so though. We know that what's equal to 122? Well, these are the two parallel sides, so the base angles. 2x equals 22, 122. x equals 61. Now, this doesn't equal 61. This isn't supplementary. We know that this angle is 122, right? So 122 plus 29y equals what? 180, because they are supplementary. Subtract 122 from both sides. Divide both sides by 29 and you get y equals 2. All right, now the angle isn't 2 degrees, just y equals 2 degrees. Got it? Let's do some more problems. Um, here's some more theorems. <coughs> the trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are blank. What do you think is two, about these two diagonals? Let's see. Congruent. That means the diagonals have to be the same size. So in trapezoid A, B, C, D, what two sides are congruent here? You got A, C, and you got B, D. They are congruent. Now, theorem 6.D. This one really isn't in your book. I just added this one in because I think it's a useful one. If the triangle is isosceles and if and only if the diagonal angles have this congruency. So, 
This is just to show you how the angles are. Now, when you have a triangle right here, um, oh yeah, also with the, sorry, I forgot this, with the diagonals, you pretty much form two isosceles triangles. All right, these pieces are congruent, these. This doesn't bisect, so the same one's not congruent, but the same sides, so like the top two are congruent, the bottom two. And these two triangles right here are similar triangles, okay? So everything's going to be the same, we're actually gonna use that because look at side, angle, side, side, angle, side, similarity. And we're gonna use that information to find our angles right here. <clears throat> so with our angles, first thing, this is isosceles, this is isosceles, so all four of these angles are equal, okay? Another thing, um, because these two base angles are equal and these two angles are equal, that means that angle ABC has to be congruent to BDC, all right? Also means that since these two base angles are congruent, and these two pieces are, ABD is congruent to DCA, all right? And then the only angles we have here, we're gonna use vertical angles to show that these two angles are congruent, these two. So these two triangles are exactly the same triangle, they're congruent triangles, and these two triangles are similar triangles, okay? okay. We're going a little bit above and beyond what you need to do. So I want you guys to fill out problem nine first, and that is just dealing with side lengths. So that's just dealing with 6.5, so not even this one. Let's see if you got it. Now, A is not 18. A is equal to 10, because those two pieces are congruent. B, this side right here, is congruent to the 18. See? C is congruent to the leg, which is 24. Now, does anyone know what D is congruent to? Who got the answer? Yell it out. You're wrong. Can't find it, all right? There's no way really to find this um, unless you know what this actual angle is. Then you can use like a cosine, the law of cosine of the law of sine to find it. But without that angle knowing, you can't find D. All right? <clears throat> or if this was a right angle. Um, fill in all the angles. So use this rule to try to find this. Go. So now we're not using this rule, we're using this rule. Let's see if you got it. First one, vertical angle is 126, all right? Um, if I do want to find these two angles, 126, 180 minus 126, because it's a straight line, I can find it's 54. So these two angles are 54, all right? Now, there's a couple things I know. I know I can find this angle right here, um, but I first I'm gonna do these two angles. They're both 21. So now I got all the guineas. Now I'm gonna have to do some math. These three add up to 180, these three add up to 180, 180, 180, okay? So, if I did 54 plus 21 plus whatever this angle is, it's 180, right? 54 and 21 is 75, 105. So that means this is 105 and that's 105. Doing good so far? See, it's not too bad. Now, these four angles are all equal. Now, we know this is 126 and we know these two angles are equal, so we can call them both x. x plus x plus 126 equals 180. 2x plus 126 is 180, 2x is 54, and x is 27. So that means that 27, 27, and these two are also 27s. <clears throat> and that's it. Much easier than it looks. Now I'm going to use the properties of an isosceles triangle to do some more work. A shelf fitting into a covered corner of a kitchen is an isosceles trapezoid. You're going to find angles N, M, and L. Try it. All right, let's work together. I'm going to point and you're going to yell your answer that you got. Find the measure of angle N. So K, L, M, N is N. I should tell you this is a vowel. Blank, blank. Isosceles trapezoid. So blank and blank are congruent angles. K and N. N, that means the measure of angle N equals the measure of angle K. Very good. And they both equal 50 degrees. Good. So we got the first one. We got K. Now we're going to find L. Because K and L are blank, blank, C, I. Ooh, what could that be? Ready? Think you got the words? And the word is not congruent. Ready? First word is consecutive. Right, think back to the two parallel lines. The second word is I, in, in. Interior angles are actually consecutive interior angles. Remember, if these extended, 
Consecutive interior angles are always supplementary. So that means that measure of angle L equals what minus what? 180 minus the measure of angle K, which is 50. 180 minus 50 is 130. Hopefully you got that. No, some of you did. All right. Last thing we do is find M. M, M, M. M and what are a pair of base angles? L. All right. So they're congruent and angle M equals the angle L. And we know that angle L is 130. So measure of angle N, this is just a summary, is, what was N? N is 50. L is 130. And M is 30. And there you go. This is the actual work that's going on in your brain as you're solving this. You're just going to have to throw down numbers, but this is almost like a proof to show you why it works. You got it? All right, so 6.6, .6, trapezoid mid-segment theorem. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base, and the length is one half the sum of the lengths of the bases. So this is a whole new concept here, and this concept is spectacular. All right, because it's very easy, and it's very good, um, and it's very good to know. So first off, mid-segment is xy. So it says the mid-segment is parallel. To the A, B, and C, D, and it splits these in two. So X, A is congruent to X, C, all right? And B, Y is congruent to Y, D. A, B is congruent to the base, which is also congruent to the other base. I mean, sorry, A, B, the base is congruent to the mid-segment, which is also congruent to the other one. All right, put it down here. X, Y is parallel to A, B, and X, Y is parallel to C, D. All right? Now, what do you think x, y actually equals compared to a, b, and c, d? Do you think you can find out a formula for it? Based on the word mid, cent, mid, mid. Mid should think of average. How do you find the average of the length of a, b, and c, d? What do you think? Well, if you said take half of the sum of the two, you were correct. So you add a, b, and c, d's values together, divide by two, and that gives you x, y value. So what I did here is I just made a little try, uh, made a little trapezoid to show you this easy because too many letters. So if I called through my little figure again here, I called the top A and the bottom B. All right, way to find the mid segment is just half of A plus B, and that equals C. C, and that's it. So half of the top plus the bottom equals the middle. All these fancy words here. I like one letter better than two. It makes it easier for you. Got it. Ready to try some examples? I am. So, example number 12. In the diagram, XY is the mid segment of trapezoid PQRS. Find XY. So, XY equals, what's the formula? One half of PQ plus what? SR. Very good. We're going to do this one together. So, it equals one half of. We're going to substitute in 16 for PQ and 9 for SR. So it is 1 half of 16 plus 9. 1 half of 16 plus 9. What's 16 plus 9? Half of 25. Half of 25 is 12.5. So the length of XY right here is 12 and a half inches, or 12 and 5 tenths inches. See how easy that is? You ready to try some on your own? I want you guys to try 13, 14, 15, and 16. All right. Now, 13, you don't need the formula for. All right. Just remember that. You need the formula for these. 13 is just dealing with sine lengths. See if you remember that. All right. Let's go over it. Problem 13. Well, we said that this mid segment bisects both sides. So that means in order to find x, it's not going to be 5, it's going to be 9. And y is going to be your 5. You got it? Good. QR is just 9 plus 9 is 18. SP is 5 plus 5 is 10. All right? It bisects the sides. Problem 14, we're going to use our formula. Okay? Half of 6 plus 16. 6 plus 16 is 22. Half of 22 is 11. So the length of AB is 11. See how easy that was? 
problem 15. Wait, now we're given the middle. So let's write out our formula. 28 equals half of x plus 46. All right? Because we have the mid segment, we're finding the side. So in order to get rid of this one half, what we do is we multiply both sides by two. We're using our algebra. So we get 56, two times 28 is 56, two times a half, this cancels out, equals x plus 46, minus 46 on both sides, you get x equals 10. Now, there is an easier way to do this. This way is 100% okay if you like it. Usually about 10% of the students do. The way I prefer it is, how do you get from 46 to 18, uh, how do you get from 46 to 28? You have to add 18, or subtract 18, right? So 28 plus 18 is 46, right? So I have to add 18 to x to get to 28. So 28 minus 18 is what? What plus 18 is 28? 10. See that? Whatever you do to get to the middle from the one side, you have to do to get to the other one. So 46 minus 18 is 28. Minus 18 is 10, because 10 plus 18 is 28, plus 18 is 46. You're going to get the hang of this soon, all right? I know that just confused half you. Don't worry, we're going to get back to it. Now, this one, you're looking for the mid-segment, so it's just half of the sum of 30 plus 12. Half of 42 is 21. Let's do some more examples. These more examples are better. We're going to hammer it home. So we're going to start with the do now example. Okay, so this will show that you know how to do, um, not necessarily your mid segments, but this will show that you're good with your trapezoid. So do your trapezoid real quick, quick review on trapezoid, and then we'll get back in the mid segment. Okay, the first one you're finding the angles. You can use 37, find that F is, where am I? I'm oh, sorry, this is 31, A is 31, I'm just going to point down here. All right. C, D, and F are all 37. <coughs> Got it? We're going to use them to find G and I. So I, we know these two are 37. In order to find I, we do 37 plus 37 plus I is 180. 74 plus I is 180. I is 106. So if I is 106, G is vertical to it. G is also 106. Now we can use that to find J and H because those are linear pairs. They're supplementary. So 180 minus 106 gives you H and G which is 74. So H is 74, and J, I said G, I meant J, J is also 74. So now all we have to do is find these two. We know this is 31, this is 74, so we just have to find E, right? So these two and that one add up to 180. Combine like terms and subtract from 180, and you get E is 75, and if D is 75, D is also 75. All right, just working around, filling in some numbers. All right, look at problem B. I'm going to put C first, that's 140. Um, and then these are supplementary, so 180 minus 140 is 40. B is 40, and C is 140. Find the missing angles. Well, angle A is supplementary, so 180 minus 35, find A, is 45. C, congruent, that's 135. And D, congruent to A, which is 45. And that should do that. All right. How are we doing with these? Let us go to the next part. And trapezoid. This is what is supposed to be your homework. Um, we're going to go through this again. What do you think? J, M, and L. So, Remember, I saw this trapezoid, the bases are the tops and the bottoms, the legs are the sides, and you have your two sets of base angles that are congruent that we're going to use for these problems down here. Sorry, I didn't see that's problem one. So, L is 50, 180 minus 50 is 130, so J and M are 130 and 130. All right, problem two, if this is 100, L is 100, 180 minus 100 is 80 and 80. Good. This is 118, J is 118. 180 minus 118 is 62, 62, and 62. All right. Determine whether the quadrilateral is a trapezoid. Yes. It's isosceles. 
because these two angles are like that, it means that these AB is parallel to DC. Is this one an isosceles? Actually, uh, is trapezoid? The answer is yes, because this can go in base angles. This one is, because since these two are 90 degrees, that means that these two sides are parallel. Parallel base sides. And this one right here, the answer is no. All right, because these two sides are parallel, that's okay. However, it's a parallelogram. In order to be a, a, a trapezoid, this angle right here really has to come in. Technically, they're going to say maybe it is a trapezoid now because two sets of parallel sides are congruent. Uh, two sets of uh, sides are parallel. I'm still going to go with no. You have one set of parallel sides, which is good, but since these sides go to the side, these actually come in. Okay. All right. Back to mid segments. Maybe I should have switched the order, but this is the order I'm going to do in the school anyway. So. All right, we get these six answers. Let's check. Um, problem 17, 18 divided by two. That's how you find A and B. You should have got nine and nine. This one right here, if this is 10, C is two times 10, which is 20, and D is equal to 10, which is um, 10. All right. Problem 18, if this is 14, X is also 14. If this is 13, Y is also 13 because they are congruent. Bisector, remember, C is 2 times 13, which is 26. These are easy. I should have gave these for homework, though. Um, if this is 4, A is 4 because they're congruent. D and C, or B is 4 plus 4 is 8. D and C are congruent, so they're half of 15. Half of 15 is 7.5 and 7.5. All right. <coughs> Add the 2, divide by. By 2, 19 plus 23 divided by 2 is half of 42, which is 21. 42 and 68, take the sum of them, you get 110. Half of 110 is 55. 31 plus 7 is 38. Half of 38 is 19. And there you go. Six simple problems to get warmed up. You warmed up yet? Ready to get to the harder ones? All right, try 23 through 28, go. All right, let's go see if your answers are correct. Now, I'm gonna show you the tricks with these problems again. Ready? Four plus what is 16? Well, the old way to do it was 16 equals one half of four plus x plus four, multiply 16 by two is 32. 32 minus four is 28, so x is 28. But four plus what is 16? Four plus 12 is 16, right? What's 16 plus 12? Isn't that easier? Let's do it both ways again. <coughs> 21 equals half of 36 plus x. 21 times 2 is 42. 42 subtracting 36 from 42 gives you 6. Okay? Now the other way. 36. How do you get from 36 to 21? Minus 15. 21 minus 15 equals 6. Okay? Choose your poison. Next one, 24 equals half of 19 plus x, 48 equals 19 plus x, 48 minus 19 is 29, all right? 19, to get to 24, you add 5, 24 plus 5, you get 29. These problems, you need to use this formula. So, 2x equals 1 half of 42, 46 plus 32. 46 plus 32 is 78. 2x equals half of 78. Half of 78 is 39. 2 times what number is 39? So you divide 39 by 2, and you get x equals 19.5. All right? Problem 27, another tricky one. x plus 6 equals half of 3x minus 7 plus x plus 3. So you combine like terms here. 3x and x is 4x. Negative 7 plus 3 is minus 4. Now, half of 4x is 2x. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. I just distribute the 1 half. So you get x plus 6 equals 2x minus 2. Can you multiply this by 2 and get this to be 2x plus 12 equals 4x minus 4? You could do that as well, and you'll get the same answer. So now I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And I get x minus 2 equals 6. Add 2. x equals 8. 
All right, you want to check your answers? 11, um, 14, so you had three, and then this is uh, 17. Plus three plus three, I get my answers. This one always gets them, 28. 75 equals half of x squared plus 101. Multiply both sides by two, because you don't want to have one half x. 150 equals x squared plus 101. 150 minus 101 is 49 is x squared. Square root of 49 is seven. And that's your answer. Right, technically it's plus or minus seven. Okay. Why don't we get into kites now? Trevor's always done, kite time. Now with kites. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are not congruent. What do you notice about these two diagonals? Perpendicular. So, since they're perpendicular, what does that mean? AC is, remember the symbol for perpendicular? Upside down T, BD. Now this theorem, I kind of threw in there just because it's, that's why it's eight, six point K, because um, it helps. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So quadrilateral, a, B, C, D is a kite, then angle A is congruent to angle C. And is angle B congruent to angle D? Well look, this one's wider, right? So it's actually not. So this is the only one, pretty much, um, besides the trapezoid, that doesn't have opposite sides. Good? Now, what I want you guys to do is attempt problem number 29. Yeah. What? Door right there, okay? okay. Alright, so going with this. By theorem 6 by K, QRST has exactly one pair of congruent side angles. Obviously, these two aren't congruent because they're different angles. So we're gonna call T and R the same letter. Because S is not congruent to angle Q, that means that R and T must be congruent, right? So the measure of angle T equals the measure of angle R. All right, so you're gonna write and solve the equation. T plus R plus 70 plus 88 equals, how many degrees is inside a quadrilateral? 360, all right? Now, we're gonna call these two the same angle. You can call them whatever letter you're not, right? I'm gonna call it X, so if this is X, and the R is also X, all right? Plus 70 plus 80 equals 360. Combine like terms. X plus X is 2X. 70 plus 80 is 158 equals 360. 360 minus 158, so you get 2X equals 202. T is 101, angle R is 101. Sorry about that, screaming kids. Good? All right, let's do 30, 31, 32. Try it on your own. 30. Which side's most congruent? Well, B, D, and A. All right, because the two congruent angles, sorry, congruent sides, Bottoms and the tops, right? The two congruent angles are always between the two congruent, uh, different congruent sides. So if you have two congruents here, it's gonna be the ones between the sides that are different sides, all right? So 80 and A are the congruent angles. And then the way to find B is 80 plus 80 plus 30 plus B equals 360. It's just the only way to do it. All right, so 190 plus B is 360. B is 170. All right, with sides, um, look at the side lengths. Well, this one obviously is a different side than this, so A has to be 13 and 22 and B. Got it? Because these are all kites. Problem 32. Well, these two angles are different, so these two ones have to be congruent. So G plus 75 
plus i plus 85 equals 360. G and I are the same, so we'll call them x's, right? x plus 75 plus 85 plus x equals 360. x and x is 2x's. 160. 360 minus 160 is 200. x is 100. All right? We all good? Almost done. Problem 33. 34, go. Do them with the angles. All right, A, B, C, D, and E are all equal. Why are they all equal? Because they are perpendicular. So they're all 90. Remember, the diagonals are perpendicular in a kite. E and F. How do you find that? Well, we have a triangle here. 42, 90, and E, right? So 42 plus 90 plus E equals 180. 132 plus E is 180. 180 minus 132 is 48. Now, if this is 48, this bisects these angles, so 48 and 48. All right, and now we're gonna find G. These two triangles are congruent, they're just flipped. 48, 48, 90, 90, so 42, G has to be 42. All right, now these two triangles right here are also congruent, so we'll find H and I. We're gonna make a triangle here. 90 plus 31 plus J equals 180, um, 121, subtracted from 180, J is 59. So that means J is 59 and H is also 59. Since this is 31, this bisects the ends, so that's also 31. Now the diagonals bisect the two angles that are not congruent, okay? They don't bisect the congruent angles. So that's how you figure that. Right here, let's go. Uh, BAC, BAC is 82. So, right away, half of 82 is, B is 41, C is 41. We know these right here are all 90, but they weren't asked, right? We can find A, though, 41, 90, and A. 131 plus A is 180. A is 49. If A is 49, D is 49. Now, to find these right here, A, B, D is 106. A, B, D, so this angle right here is 106. We know what angle A is, right? It's 50, uh, 49. So 49 plus H equals 106. Subtract them, and H is 57. If H right here is 57, E is also 57. In order to find these angles, 90, 57, or 90, 57, and, oh, 90, 57, and G add up to 180. 147 subtracted from 180 is 33. If G is 33, F is 33. All right, if I wanted to find CDB, it'd just be 66, all right. See that? Easy, easy, easy. Hopefully you have no questions yet. Let's go to 35. Oh, no more, these are just the rules, right? It's always good to have one place where you put rules in. Parallel sides of a trapezoid. Typically one, book says two, but I'm gonna go one. Opposite sides, all right? Um, no parallel, no congruent sides. You don't have to have any congruent sides in a regular trapezoid. You don't have to have any congruent angles in a regular trapezoid. So that's pretty easy. Isosceles trapezoid, still one pair of parallel sides. The legs are congruent. And are there any congruent angles? Yes, there's two pairs of base angles that are congruent. The one on the one parallel side and the other pair is on the second parallel side. Kite. No parallel sides on a kite. The only one that we're really going over right now, type of quadrilateral that doesn't have parallel sides. A lot of quadrilaterals don't, but none of like the specific name ones. Congruent sides. Two sets of adjacent congruent sides. That means they're next to each other. Congruent angles. One pair of congruent angles, and those pairs of congruent angles come between the two non-adjacent sides. I mean, non-congruent sides. All right, diagonals. The trapezoid, we said that the lengths, top little two guys, bottom guys, that's really it. And this is an um, isosceles trapezoid. Right here, diagonal angles. Those, the corners, these pieces, these pieces, and then all the verticals. All right.
And like I said, isosceles trapezoid. I'll put the isosceles in there. Kite. Diagonal lengths. That's it. He's obviously not going to break. Diagonal angles. So you got your 490 degrees. You got your congruent, this bisects this angle, this bisects that angle. These two sides are equal because those two triangles are equal. These two sorry, angles are also equal. And then you got the bottom ones bisected as well. All right. And then finally, you got the mid segment. The way the mid segment works is um, C, the middle angle, uh, middle segment is half of the sum of the two bases. And then your actual lengths, you have that bisects each leg. All right. All right. And let's go through what you do for homework. Do your homework. All right, let's go over them all. All right, problems one through nine. All right. Get on my screen. All right, so first one, find the mid segments. Half of 10 plus 18. Half of 28 is indeed 14. Half of 21 plus 29. 21 plus 25 is half of 46, and that is 23. Half of 57 plus 76. Half of 133, which is 66.5. All right, so that's how you find each mid-segment. All right, find angle G if it's a kite. So G is equal to E in all these cases, or G is equal to E in this case right here. So since they're equal, X plus X plus 100 plus 40 is 360. 2X plus 140 is 360. 2X is 220, and X is 110. In this case, G is not the congruent angle. F is the congruent angle because it's between the two non-congruent sides. So these two are equal. So 60 plus 110 plus 110 plus G equals 360. G plus 280 equals 360. And G equals 80 degrees. All right? In this case, G and F are the two congruent sides. So 150 plus 90 plus X plus X equals 360. 2X plus 240 equals 360, 2x is 120, and x and g are both equal to 60 degrees. All right? Last three, these are the most difficult problems that we have to do. And let's look at them. Because you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. Remember that? We're gonna go combine some lessons here. It says use that to find all the side lengths of the kite. So we wanna find the outside side lengths, and we're just giving the inside lengths. Let's scoot up here. So, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. We know all the middles are 90, right? So, first thing I'm going to do is use that triangle right there. This is 3 and this is 3. So, 3 squared plus 3 squared is c squared. 9 plus 9 is c squared. 18 is c squared. Square root of 18 is 4.2. So, this is 4.2 and that's 4.2. To find yz and zw, which are congruent, you have your 3 and your 5. So, 3 squared plus 5 squared is c squared, 9 plus 25 is c squared, 34 is c squared, square root of 34 is 5.8. So that means that these two segments are 5.8, these two segments are 4.2. See? Going back to the Pythagorean theorem, it's a fun thing to use. Alright, this problem right here, well, it doesn't matter what order you solve it. You have 6, 12 in your c, 36 plus 144 is c squared, square root of 180 is... 13.4, 13.4. This one, we're using our fours and our sixes. You got 16 plus 36 is C squared, 52 is C squared, and 7.2 is your C. 7.2, 7.2. All right, last one. Five squared plus 10 squared, oh, forgot my squared, equals C squared. 25 plus 100 equals C squared. 125 is C squared. All right, 11.2 is C. Right here, 10 and 19. 10 squared, 19 squared is C squared. 461, take the square root of it, and you get 21.5. All right, so that concludes 6.2 trapezoids and kites lesson. All right, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about these two types of quadrilaterals, um, and you will retain this information. It wasn't too difficult. If you have any questions, once again, be sure to email me. Um, and hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the answers. Hope you got most of the answers right on your own. All right, so until next time, I'll see you um, next time.